What is going on, everybody? It is your boy, a man's toxic camel. Back at it with another video. And today we are going to be doing our spoiler review of the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. But before we get to the actual beginning of the video itself, guys, if you have not seen the fun Five Nights at Freddy's movie, this, of course, there is going to be spoilers. So if you don't want to be spoiled or if you don't, uh, if you don't want to be spoiled, probably watch another video. I have a spoiler free video that I posted uh, two days ago. So be sure to check that one out. And if, for those who do not care about spoilers, stick around. But before we get to actual beginning as well, don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Because number one, it's absolutely free. Number two, we're on the road to 400 subscribers. Just 29 away now. It will really help out you, boy, if you did subscribe. It also goes for people that have been watching my channel for a while and haven't subscribed yet. If you missed my previous toxic movie reviews I've done in the past, they're on a playlist on my YouTube channel. If you'd like to check that one out, both spoiler and spoiler free. Uh, don't forget to ring the bell for all notifications and notification upload because we do multiple uploads here on the channel every single day. Also, don't forget to like the video if you do like my FNAF spoiler review because it'll let me know that you do like my spoiler reviews and it'll also help with the YouTube algorithm and recommend the video more. Also, do share the video because also, man, I guess some more people join that time. And do feel free to comment your spoiler thoughts on the movie down below. But uh, with that being said, guys, I'm going to go take a drink of water because I'm going to be talking a lot. So going into FNAF, um, I went with my two, uh, two close friends, Jax and Ace. And um, we were able to see it two days early in a Dolby theater, which was really cool. And, um, yeah, I said this in my spoiler-free review. I liked the movie. I don't... I, was it as amazing I was, as I was hoping it to be? Not really. It ended up being what I expected it to be, a B movie. That's what it looked like from the trailers. And I originally gave it a B plus. I'd probably give it a B minus now because watching other people's spoiler reviews of the movie, I kind of have downgraded my score by a little bit but i still think the movie is good though um but yeah with that being said let's just talk spoilers so the opening scene of the movie i thought was very interesting and i thought that's where they were gonna go to start the movie it starts out with a security guard that was before mike coming there and I thought this scene was a good way to start things off. I thought the dude was going to get, um, I thought if you guys have played the games, there's some, um, times where one of the FNAF animatronics chases you through a vent or whatever, or is in a vent with you. And I thought the guy was going to bite the dust that way. He didn't end up biting the dust that way. I think how he... And I, by the way, I've watched the movie twice now. I watched it in theaters, and then the next day it dropped on streaming, so I watched it with my parents because they hadn't seen it. So I, I thought they would enjoy it, so they did. Um, and Foxy, I believe, is the one that takes the dude down and brings him to the we the image in the trailers we all saw where he, him and Mike both eventually get stuck in the chair and are strapped down with a uh, animatronic mask coming forward to his face but slowly but shortly and i was very curious if they were going to show the gore and let or just have a blood splatter happen on the wall and i to my surprise they didn't really do that i would uh I would have liked if they would have maybe shown, like, a little blood splatter go on the ceiling, the wall, but that's okay as a horror fan. That, it, it's a minor gripe of mine. It's not a big negative that drops the movie down for me, but it, it was still kind of bugged me. Then after that, after it cuts away, it transitions to the opening of the movie. And boy, oh my goodness. I'm not even kidding. Uh, this gave me goosebumps. This whole entire intro, the way they did it, I was getting kind of hyped up. They had this, uh, music playing, going like, da-da-da-da-da-da-da. 
da, da, da. It kind of sounded similar to Tim Burton music. And I was digging the intro. And it was showing the arcade style from so, some of the FNAF games that are kind of spinoffs or slash prequels with William Afton when he was Golden Freddy killing all the kids and stuff. I thought that was really well done and it got me pretty hyped up for the movie. Then after that amazing opening tile sequence was done, it transitioned to our main character of the movie, Mike, played by Josh Hutcherson, which I hadn't seen in a movie in a while, to be honest with you. The last movies I've seen him from are the Hunger Games movies over there, which ironically, Ballads of Songbirds and Snakes is coming out next year. Not next year, next month. <laughs> Um, but anyways, it was good to see him again, and he is basically trying to find a job to live with his sister and pay the bills and all sorts of stuff, and I thought the relationship between him and his little sister, Abby, was really cute in this movie. I thought they did a really good job developing it besides one aspect, which I'll talk to you guys about a little bit later, like a little bit later, not even kidding. Um, so I thought their relationship was really cute, and I thought the main little girl, I think her name is Piper something, I forgot what her name was, but she did really good as Abby in this movie. So then it transitions to Mike going to his job at the time, not current job, where he has a security gig uh, before going to the FNAF security gig, ironically. And we all saw the, well, not all of us, but there was a bunch of, I forgot what the term was called, but like photos were released on the set of FNAF where it was showing uh, Mike punching somebody in the river. And we find out why that is. So he basically just sees a kid that is alone, then he gets pulled aside by his dad, which Josh Hutcherson, Mike, is thinking somebody's abducting him. So he ends up chasing after him and tackles him right into the river. And then we all saw the scene in the trailers where he's like punching the guy out in the river. And then, yeah, and it's revealed it's the guy, it's the kid's dad. So, yeah, and Mike kind of screwed up, which eventually brings him to Steve Ragland's was it Steve or some? I'm pretty sure it was Steve Raglan's office. Steve Raglan's office. It was um so, and he offers him the security gig at Five Nights at Freddy's. And at this point, uh, I'm not going to talk about it yet. But at this point, we all knew what was going on. That's all I'm saying because. In Steve Raglan's voice, all of us FNAF fans... Well, we already knew! All of us already knew, anyways. That knew the tiniest bit of FNAF lore that... I'll just say it right now. I don't have to wait until later in the movie. We all knew he was freaking William Afton. And um, I asked my mom and dad this um, because they haven't really played the games or don't know the lore. And I asked this to them. Did they think that Steve Raglan, a.k.a. Matt, William Afton was obvious as the reveal as he was tied in if he would was it easy to understand that he was tied in with the story that's why I asked them and they said yeah so if you're a person that hasn't played the FNAF games and is well, you would probably know that that guy has something tied in with the animatronics and stuff so that was it was pretty obvious, and he was going like, oh, this, the guy that owns the place isn't ready to let it go yet, and not in that, not in that voice, that sounds nothing similar to Matthew Lillard at all, but we all pretty much knew that he was William Afton. After all, it did say that he was William Afton in the cast before the movie came out, or the trailer came out, excuse me, but yeah. Then I believe we transition to Mike's first night. And this aspect I had a change of heart on. So basically, I forgot if they showed it or not at first. But basically, he sleeps and he has this dream flashback to when he had a brother that was stolen by the name of... 
I forgot what his name was. Garrett. Garrett. That was what his name was. And I thought that aspect of the movie, I, I was mixed with it originally when I saw it. But after watching it a second time, it's just, I don't know, because it makes Mike kind of be like a jerk and feel feel as if he doesn't care about this his sister and it it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth i don't know i didn't like the brother aspect i thought it was interesting how he kept on going back into the dreams with the dream something theory or whatever where if you stay in the dreams for long enough you can basically find out stuff and William Afton, Walt, well, and the, all the FNAF animatronics were in the dream as well. So that was, I'm more negative on that now. Um, oh, what other, what other things happened after that? And that was basically all the Five Nights, because uh, all of us know Five Nights of Freddy's, right? Five Nights on the security job. And, and though almost four of those nights they have the same dream with the FNAF animatronics and stuff going back to that specific moment where it's so focused on that, it doesn't focus on the actual Five Nights with all the animatronics coming past the doors and you shut the doors and flash the light on them so they go away. That happens, that does not happen here, which is unfortunate, but because they follow the brother storyline. Then on the second night, it is really revealed that the aunt, the the rich person, and it, I, I, was, I almost said something else. Just basically the rich entitled person that is trying to take custody of Abby is trying to steal her from Mike. And it is revealed that she is trying to get the babysitter that has been babysitting Abby and a bunch of other people to basically cost Mike and take away Abby. And that that leads to the first cameo of the movie that I thought was pretty cool. I'm not necessarily a big fan of him. I forgot the actor's name was, but I did see him on YouTube once. Um, not actor, the YouTuber's name. Madrad? Magrag? It's something, it's something that rhymes, but I, I saw him, and that was pretty interesting. I was going like, that guy looks a lot familiar. Isn't he a YouTuber? And I was going like, oh, yeah, it is. So, and then I was telling Jackson Ace beside me, I go, I'm like, that's a YouTuber too. So, that was pretty interesting to see him in it, even though I'm not necessarily a big fan. It didn't really make me pop as much as another one, which we'll talk about. So, they're all in on the plan, and she says, all right, I'm going to pay you. $2,000 to break into Five Nights at Freddy's and basically mess everything up to make Mike look um, guilty. So they go in there and we just all saw in the trailers, they start breaking stuff and stealing valuable stuff, which eventually leads to our first on four on screen kills with all the animatronics moving and stuff, which uh, first one, to go out gets eaten by a cupcake we all saw that in the trailer the trailers chica's cupcake she launches it and then the the cupcakes and they one at the guy's face that was pretty goofy b-movie fun kill then the guys running like ah, ah, on the cameras and he eventually goes into the closet which we also saw in the trailers where bonnie's in there and then bonnie kills him so that was pretty fun and then that leaves two left. The other guy gets killed by Foxy. And then the main chick that was the babysitter for Abby ends up dying too. But this one was pretty, uh, a pretty, it, even though it wasn't on screen, you just saw a shadow of it happen. It was still pretty gnarly. And I expect that to happen. Uh, me, me and Jackson Ace were all looking at each other like, wow so basically she we all saw it in the trailers too where she's chasing the kid the kid ghost kid goes into the fnaf animatronic and she's going how did you get in there and then boom the jaws collapse while she's reaching in to freddy and she gets cut in half that was pretty brutal kill 
And apparently a bunch of people have been saying that was kind of a, tr or theorizing that it's kind of a tribute to the bite of 87, which if you guys do not know, that's when uh, William Afton's little son ends up dying due to Michael Afton by accident. So, I, the, and I could definitely see the influences of that. Um, take another drink of water because I'm thirsty. So, obviously, no babysitter to watch Abby while um, Michael's on the job. Michael decides, okay, I'm going to take you to... Thanks for interrupting the video while I'm filming, Dad. Anyways, um, as I was saying, so they both are at the pizzeria. And Abby, eventually, the... The animatronics are talking to her and eventually convince her to come out of her bed and come say hello. So, it, I obviously knew it was a psyche when we heard Abby screaming and all the FNAF animatronics were surrounding her or whatever. And Michael's trying to get her back. Uh, I thought that was very obvious that she was okay. So, basically, it's a reveal that they were just tickling her and they're for her friends now. And Michael's going like, what? 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 And it's just, uh, then what ends up happening afterwards is Michael is trying to find out what happens to Garrett and asks her questions to see if they know what happened to Garrett, which is just, uh, you, you know, I talked about it earlier. Then after that, um, we go to the fourth night, the second to last night where, Vanessa knew the whole entire time and uh, hid it away from Michael. So Michael is obviously very mad. And this is the part of the movie I probably is my biggest negative, And I didn't spoil it in my spoiler free review. But they make it a little bit too goofy where the FNAF animatronics and them end up making a fort for all of them. That I was kind of going, ah, it's too goofy. And all in the theater, I was going, oh, no. why, why? It's just, it, it's a, it, it's just, I wish. Be, I either want it to go more serious or m more comedic. Some elements worked. That was too kiddy. I didn't want it to be too kiddy, but it ended up being pretty thick, pretty kiddy. So Mike is talking to Vanessa, and we get introduced to the spring one of the spring lock suits, which is a major key to what happens later. And I forgot what they talked about, but that's pretty much the big thing I remember from that. They move along back to Abby and she's dancing and stuff with the FNAF animatronics. And she strums Bonnie's guitar and she gets electrocuted and flung back like, oh! And she's concussed and knocked out. So, uh, she eventually wakes up and M Michael decides to take her back home while Vanessa is saying to Mike, if you bring her back here again, I will shoot you. So, then... That leads to the morning where he basically asks for his, his aunt's help to watch the her so he can go do the final night of FNAF. So, um, and to sleep and see what happened to Garrett. So, uh, he talks to the animatronics in his dreams and the animatronics are basically saying, if you want that to happen and be with Garrett and your family... You have to give us Abby. And he accidentally, he says yes, which I was going, come on. That's still, a, eh. it ruined the relationship of him and Abby. So, and um, what happened afterwards? Um, and he re immediately regrets it and says, no, I I changed my mind. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. And all the animatronics end up attacking him in his dreams, which eventually translates to real life. Then he gets trapped in the chair that the other security guard did not make it in. So he uh, luckily escapes and is trying to go back to save Abby. And then he gets jumped by Foxy. But last minute, she he gets saved by Vanessa. And it, tra uh, it 
moves on to Abby is, um, Golden Freddy is there saying, uh, trying to convince Abby to go back to the FNAF thing. Go to the, but go back to the pizzeria. I cannot think. Ugh. It's a lot, guys. It's a lot. If I, have to say, if I say the same things quite a bit, I'm sorry. It's just my brain is fried. Some par parts I can't really think about. And plus, I can't really um, tell the whole entire movie. So that eventually cuts to them taking a taxi to the pizzeria with Corey X Kenshin in it. One of me and Ace's both favorite YouTubers of all time. It was cool to see him. We already saw him in the trailers. It was cool to see him and he seemed as if he had a blast. It was cool to have a little moment there for the fans. So, and then he takes them there and Vanessa st stitched up Mike and reveals that, oh, William Afton is actually the person that did that to the animatronics. Because they already knew that they were ghost kids. But their bodies are in there, she revealed. So, and she did a twist that I was not expecting, which was interesting. Where it is revealed that she is William Afton's daughter. Which I thought was very interesting. I'm mixed about how the twist was pulled off with her character. And, um, it's just... Because Vanessa is a newer character to the game. She was only introduced in FNAF Security Breach a while back. Um, so it was interesting how they pulled off a twist with a newer character that she tied in with one of the older characters. So... That was very interesting, and she also reveals that basically the FNAF animatronics want to make Abby like them and be an animatronic too. So Mike immediately rushes towards back to the pizzeria and tries stopping them. He stops Bonnie and Freddy with ease by moving water onto their stage and then electrocuting it, which I thought was... uh. It wasn't a bad way to take them out, but it was I'm mixed about how they were kind of easy to take out. Those I wasn't as big on. I wasn't as mad about. Not mad, but as questioned about as for Chica and the cupcake. How they just get electrocuted and they're done instead of water and electrocution. Water and electrocution makes sense, but like just straight up electricity. Eh. So he eventually saves Abby and says, I'm sorry, I should be pay should have been paying attention to you the whole entire time. So he basically says sorry. And all of them are hiding from the animatronics. And boom! Springtrap makes his day. Well, not Springtrap, but William Afton debuts with... William Afton comes into the movie with his golden bonnie suit. And when it played that music too, I got goosebumps too. Because the way they did that was really cool. How he was kind of slunched over walking towards Michael slowly but surely. And yeah, it was cool. So it, it, it brought the horror aspect back into the movie. Even though it wasn't really in the movie. So he's beaten up Mike by little bits and Vanessa eventually tries stopping him, and um, uh, the, uh, William Afton takes off the mask to reveal it was the w Matthew Lillard all along. Who knew? Who knew, right? So he eventually, well, Raglan, Steve Raglan. So it was obvious, in my opinion, because I know what happens, and it was obvious for my parents. So... Yeah, that was not a really big reveal. So that eventually leads to Vanessa getting stabbed by William Afton. <laughs> getting stabbed by her own father. That was interesting. Telling how evil he is. Then this aspect I had a change of heart on. I originally didn't like it. But then I started to change. Where basically Mike says to Abby, show them what he did so and abby is 
a big drawer during the whole entire movie. So she draws the picture and takes the picture that they're all in happy harmony together down with Golden Freddy, a.k.a. William Afton. Then she puts on the one where he kills everyone. And then that eventually leads to the, all the animatronics turning on him and eventually giving us the spring lock suit. Uh, spring lock you know, the big spring lock thing where the suit impales him and stuff. And I think it would have been way more cooler if it was rated R with that, just that scene. But it was pretty decent for PG-13, what they did. So I clap it up for them. They did pretty decent with the spring lock scene. So he gets yoinked back by all the animatronics and they keep him captive or whatever. And Mike, Vanessa, and Abby all get out of there. Vanessa's in a coma, which I think will eventually lead to her becoming Vanny and having multiple personalities disorder. That's what my predictions are. And Mike and Abby are all a-okay. And also the ant got killed, so they can live together. Yay! And, um, excuse me. Um, so, yeah. Um, post-credit, it was just a funny gag with Corey X. Kenshin which was another funny one. That one made me laugh quite a bit. And it was also really cool to hear that, I don't know the name of the song, but it was cool to hear that FNAF created a YouTube theme song. I thought that was pretty cool that somebody created and they played that in the end credits. And the other one was a post credit scene that wasn't really a post credit scene. It was just the credits were scrolling down and it almost ended. And there was supposedly i heard a voice but i didn't know what it was saying and apparently they were it was come find me and people are theorizing that might be garrett and he might be an animatronic too now and they're saying he might be the marionette or the puppet which was interesting so yeah um so now that I got all my spoiler thoughts out yeah um fnaf i liked uh, i i the I think the rating still stands as a B plus. It's definitely it's bordering on B minus, but I think it's still B plus because the fans will love it. So, uh, with that being said, guys, I hope you all enjoyed my spoiler review. Sorry if I kept on saying the same things over and over again. I I kept on trying to think of what else happened. So. Yeah, but before we get to the actual ending of the video itself, guys, don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel, because number one, it's absolutely free, number two, we're on the road to 400 subscribers, just 29 away now. Oh, really, really, how about your boy if you did subscribe, that also goes for people that have been watching my channel for all, haven't subscribed yet. If you missed my previous toxic movie reviews that are in our playlist on my YouTube channel, if you'd like to check that one out, also don't forget to like the video if you do like my toxic spoiler reviews. Because it'll let me know that you do like them, and it will help with YouTube algorithm and recommend the video more. Don't forget to ring the bell for all notifications from this occasional upload, because we do multiple uploads here on the channel every single day. Also, do share the video, because also, man, I guess more people join that toxic fan. And do feel free to comment your spoiler thoughts on the movie down below. But with that being said, guys, I'll see y'all next one, everybody. Pa 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 p